is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Thomas, and I'm here with the creative minds behind Halloween Horror Nights. Chris Williams, John Murdy, Mike Aiello. And gentlemen, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules for this quick interview. So, uh, past questions. It's going to be past, present, and future. What was your initial reaction when you found out that you were going to have these directorial roles in the Halloween Horror Nights event? Oh. In, in, in what respect do you mean? Like, when is we, just when like, you is just it? just found out, like, were you ecstatic? What was the first thought that came to mind? When you got the gig. When you oh, got the gig, got exactly. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> no, it was completely ecstatic. 20 years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, and uh, I came in with an outside company and, um, and I got uh, hired outright, actually, from under that company, actually, and became a universal employee and, and, um, it was really awesome and ecstatic. You know, um, big fan for horror and Halloween, and so knowing coming in and to be able to work on that, oh, it was awesome. Dream come true, honestly. That's great, that's really great. That. Yeah. How about you, John? Um, I'd actually had already, I was already working for Universal. I was with Universal Creative at the time, and I think I just finished the Mummy ride in Hollywood. And A fantastic ride, of course. You And I got a phone call from the then general manager of Hollywood who said, we're thinking of bringing Horror Nights back. You know, would you ever consider leaving creative and coming to work directly for Hollywood? And I remember I was getting, uh, my wife and I were getting married, and we were getting married in Ireland. And I remember going over to Ireland and going, okay, we have to move to L.A., which I'm from in L.A., I'm an L.A. guy. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I literally, she had, we had just bought, you know, or we had this house in Orlando, and I had to go back and go, okay, you know how we just moved everything? Yeah, we got to do it again, because <laughs> I got I to gotta do Horror Nights, because, it, yeah, as, as a kid who grew up doing this in his parents' garage, you know, even as awesome it is to design rides, I gave all of that up to do this, so... And Mike? Yeah, for me, it was like it was a slow burn into what I'm doing now. It kind of started just as a, as a writer for some of the shows for the event and then starting to get involved with the, the creative team on the mazes specifically. Um, and I guess the day where it kind of became, I was the guy that was then going to kind of decide a lot of the, the initial content for the event. Of course, ecstatic, but also immediately a, um, a sense of responsibility because I wasn't the first guy. You know, and, and knowing the legacy that this event has, not only in Hollywood, but Orlando, but worldwide, Singapore, uh, Japan, knowing that this brand is, is, is bigger than any of us. And there's a responsibility there to make sure that year over year we're producing something that the, not only the fans enjoy, but also live up to the name that is Halloween Horror Nights. And I think that, you know, the one thing I, I forgot to mention, too, is what a leap of faith that was back in 2006. I oh. mean, I mean, we, yeah. I literally yeah. quit. I was a ride designer, and I went... Oh, let's try to bring this event back in Hollywood that they haven't done in what five years, four years. It was but, you, five. but the reason I yeah. did, I said yes. I forgot to mention this. Sorry, as I jump in, um, is because I knew Chris was involved with it because I had worked with him previously on a show. Yeah, special, uh, special effects. Special effects stage. Yeah, we worked together. That's where together. we met each other, yeah. and I knew yeah. that because he was involved. That's why I said yes. Oh, thanks. So, I didn't know if you knew that. <laughs> that's great. So. Uh, my next uh, question actually is uh, based on a conversation, John, that you had with yourself. Uh, it was a conversation that you had, yes, uh, with, uh, with both the Horror Nights account and with the uh, John <laughs> underscore Murdy account. Go, go follow on Twitter, at John underscore Murdy. Um, the uh, conversation that you had was uh, about the Terror Tram. Yeah. And you said to yourself, do we have uh, a system in place yet after uh, so many years? Mm -hmm. So my question is, has it become easier or has it become easier or has it become harder with every year with the intellectual properties to decide what scenes are kept in each of the mazes to to please to the fans has it become harder as the years gone by or has it become easier no, harder <laughs> for every year has been harder than the last I, you know, I'll be honest with you, I kind of find it easier and in, in a sense well, that cool. you know you start to um, understand and have a good feeling and you know um, the in a little bit intuitive of what can work and what can't and uh, you know you start to get a feeling of that you know um, and so, I mean that's kind of how I look at it a little bit. I, you know? I think the reason that I said harder though is because it's the it's the compression of time. Oh yeah. Because when oh, we were starting out that. and we were doing like the oh, first IP year when we did three IPs yeah you know we had so much more time to really like think about it and what scenes yeah. Uh, thank God we have that shorthand now yeah. because like this year it was like 
a week, a week, a week, a week. Like come up with a whole idea and concept a maze to at least a rough ground plan level with him because yeah. of how we had to work yeah. this year every week. Yeah. And that that is hard. You know? It is really tough. But how about you, Mike? Um, I, I think, honestly, you know, the it's the brand itself that determines the level of challenge. Uh, you know, you can get a brand like Stranger Things, although, you know, every brand has a sense of challenge to it to bring it to life. But Stranger Things is a, is a show that has a lot of going forward as far as environmentally and character. Uh, things you can start kind of cherry picking out, at least to get a short list of what you think you want the maze to be. But then take a brand like Exorcist or Shining, where those don't automatically adapt yeah, they don't. In, 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 not even into close. a maze yeah. where there is a different level of, of creative thinking that you have to do in order to make in order to ensure that it's going to be something that is that can follow the at least the basic parameters that we know uh, a haunted yeah. house or maze needs to be and still be true to the property exactly that's the challenge all right and now looking forward to the future um, of course because of the legacy of Halloween Horror Nights the field has become even more competitive. Warner Brothers Horror Made here, Bush Gardens as well. What's the future of Halloween Horror Nights? To continue to yeah. push, it, push it and push it and push it and push it and push it. And that's the way all of us, I think, have approached it since the beginning. Um, I actually think that's kind of awesome that, I mean, if, if you're a fan of this kind of stuff, that you have so many different opportunities across this country now, to see this, you know, I live in a country now that doesn't have those opportunities. I mean, they're just starting to kind of figure out what Halloween is. But to be able to, to be in, you know, in LA or Orlando yeah. and to see all of this stuff, and, he, and just look at the Hall of Shadows, the home haunt side of things yeah. too. Uh, it, there's such a wealth of things you can experience. And um, it, it definitely pushes us to, it, to do things uh, better and mm. better and different. and. And um, I think it will continue to do that. I think in respect to the push, I think what we kind of have done and, and what they have seen in the last few years and seen the success from HHN, I think some of these other groups, like we mentioned Warner Brothers and some others, they see that success and now they want to try to get into the game. So I think, you know, I think it's, you know, it uh, in a sense it's really cool, though, that, you know, you know, what they're seeing from us that, that you know that they want to start pushing forward but it's really like what John said that that we do keep pushing and and keep looking and keep trying to discover and find and really push forward the best elements that we can and the best properties yeah and the, you know Hollywood's changing yeah I mean big time yeah. right now yeah. there's gonna be a moment in time when they look back years from now where they go oh yeah this was the moment where things started to change uh, it's beyond the studio system yeah. now I mean, obviously, look what we're working with this year, Netflix. Mm -hmm. I mean, this opens up a whole other world that didn't exist even mm -hmm. 10 years ago. So. Yeah. Mike, how about you? Well, uh, I mean, ve time. very simply, uh, competition breeds innovation mm -hmm. across the board, whether it's haunted houses, whether it's ride attractions, whether it's themed entertainment in general. The fact that everybody at the same time is pushing and pushing to be able to create something better, uh, something more immersive. It, it, Again, as creatives that also know other creatives in other businesses, it's a it's an awesome kind of family to be able to work in as far as themed entertainment's concerned. And it speaks a lot for just Halloween in general. You know, it's it's when we were all kids. I mean, if you could have what what you could have now yeah, yeah, when yeah. you were a kid, wouldn't you just blow your mind? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's amazing. Completely, absolutely, yes. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time, and uh, hopefully, we'll see you in Scare LA. And this has been Thomas. Chris, John, Mike, and we're all signing off.